We're here in the water cube with Destina. Can you please show us your badge? There we are. And tell us, what do you work with? Yeah, Destina Samani is my name. I'm the country team leader for Ghana, working with CRIPA. CRIPA simply means Africa Regional Center for Water and Sanitation. And what we do, we are basically working exclusively in the area of WASH, that's water sanitation hygiene. We don't do direct service delivery, but what we do, we have three core areas. Mm -hmm. We look at action research, mm -hmm. and then based on the research, to find out on the ground what is happening, where are the gaps, so that we can then develop models to respond to these gaps. Based on that, whatever finding comes and we develop the gaps, we try to build capacity for people to be able to roll it mm -hmm. out. And in building capacity, we focus on all the different levels, right, from the national, regional, to the district, local communities, and also the private sector, because we believe in the wash sector, they have a major role to play. Mm -hmm. So we work also very closely with the private sector, like some banks for credit schemes, mm -hmm. and also some private individuals who come together to lead communities. Mm -hmm. Then based on the whatever we do from the model, mm -hmm. we try to test its strengths and weaknesses. Okay. And then from there, if we see that it's working well, then we try to scale up. Mm -hmm. And in scaling up, that is where you see us delivering the service, just to test mm -hmm. the model on a more wider scale. And the good thing is that we are in several countries, 18 countries now, and we plan going into 30 countries in Africa. Okay. We represent the African voice, and the advantage we have is that we have a, our governing council is made up of ministers from we, the countries we work in. Mm -hmm. So these countries, it's very easy in terms of influencing policy. So we have the third aspect that is about influencing. Mm -hmm. But we do it, whatever we're doing, we do it alongside with all of them, with our ministers informed. By the time we get to the products, they are already aware what it is. So getting them to adapt and scale it up becomes very easy. But in doing all this, we also build our own capacity. Yeah. So when you work for Kirpa, you grow from there. Now let me focus on the area of sustainability. Mm -hmm. That is dear to our hearts. The issue of sustainability if there's no sustainability, we don't go for it. Okay. We believe that whatever we do must be sustained. And as a result, we put emphasis on sustainability. So whatever we're going to do, we integrate sustainability into it and work towards it. For instance, we just ran in a program in Ghana. Mm -hmm. For a long time, a huge sums of monies have been invested in the water sector. But in terms of access and increase, it's very marginal. Let's say about 10% in terms of the increase okay. as compared to what is going in. Now the question is, should we continue to provide just the service without looking at sustaining it? Yeah. So you realize that we spend more money going back to rehabilitate facilities. Mm -hmm. But if we had factored in sustainability from, as an beginning. Int from beginning as mm -hmm. an integrated part, mm -hmm. then it's not an afterthought. Then it makes it cheaper yeah. to be able to get the sustained projects. That's important to know that sustainability is yeah. cheaper in the long run. Yes. And this is what most times the donors, what they want to see is the numbers. Yeah. These are the number of projects you have produced, number of outputs. As to whether we'll go back and see whether they can serve the people, they can provide the services. That is normal. So now we're beginning to also come out with a study that can give us more informed information. Because now it's difficult to be able to influence the donors. But if we have evidence mm -hmm. that yes, it is really an issue. So you need to be thinking of both the sustainability and the project as well. Mm -hmm. So we're doing currently a project called the Sustainable Water Service Delivery in Ghana, a very large scale, trying to visit over two, about 2,000 water points, trying to sample household questions, looking at people's perception at their level. Mm -hmm. We should not be thinking of ourselves and thinking what we can prescribe or do. We want it to come from, from the people. Them. Let them tell us what is it that we need to do. Currently, there are models, some of the things we started. The evidence is that some are 20 years and they are still functioning. Why are they functioning? We need to know. Yeah. We need to learn. And that can help us to model better program than just sitting down from the scientific at our level and dis deciding what to do for the people. So this project will target the 2000 water point, which is actually funded by the Conrad Norman Hilton Foundation. Okay. They funded those projects in those years through World Vision, and they now say, let's go back and see what is happening to this project. Are they really giving us the needed impact as we thought? And are they really still functioning as we thought? Are the people still getting the sustainable service? Okay. And it will interest you to know that even those that we thought 
when working well, the quality was okay. Communities are not even using it, and they have their reasons because at the time some of the projects we did not involve them, and they have some cultural perceptions. Mm. They have some issues about where it was even cited. Mm -hmm. So that is why we are saying capacity building. In building the capacity, we even build with the people. Mm -hmm. And the capacity building starts from that point, where you involve them in the planning, you are already building their capacity. Mm -hmm. You involve them in taking the decision on a particular technology, you are already talking about that's, capacity building. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.